As Leon Macbeth tells us in the Baptist Heritage, it was in 1639 that Roger Williams founded the first Baptist church in America in Providence, Rhode Island. There are striking similarities between Williams' story and that of John Smith, co-founder of the church in Amsterdam 30 years earlier. Though Smith and Williams both enjoy iconic status among Baptists, and rightly so, for their roles in pioneering the Baptist movement, each had once moved from Anglicanism to Separatism on his way to becoming a Baptist pioneer, and each, only a few months after placing his mark on Baptist history, concluded that his Baptist baptism was not a true baptism because it had not been performed by someone possessing proper baptismal authority, and he then parted ways with his Baptist friends. But long after Williams broke with Baptists, he continued to take up the cause of religious liberty for all people, for which Baptists had fought vigorously and sacrificed valiantly ever since Thomas Helwes went to prison in 1612 for challenging the king's authority over people's souls. Williams wrote his most notable defense of religious liberty in 1644, The Bloody Tenet of Persecution, and followed it with an updated version in 1652. So Baptist debt to Roger Williams, though he was one of us for only a short time, is incalculable. Yesterday I mentioned that Roger Williams continued to vigorously defend the Baptist principle of religious liberty for all people long after he ceased being a Baptist. As Leon Macbeth tells us in the Baptist Heritage, this principle and its corollary separation of church and state were neither common nor popular in William's day. Yet Williams began preaching this doctrine by the early 1630s, based his new colony on it, and made it a foundational principle of the Baptist church he founded at Providence. In 1644, Williams stated his case in a treatise entitled The Bloody Tenet of Persecution. In it, Williams argued that Scripture makes it clear that civil officials are to have no authority over religious matters, and that it is a sin to persecute people on the basis of religious belief and practice. As Thomas Hell was before him, Williams advocated unbridled religious liberty for all people, including Catholics, Muslims, Jews, and even atheists. Over the next few years, Williams and his positions were widely attacked throughout England and the American colonies. In 1647, John Cotton, a leading minister in Boston, opened a public debate with Williams by publishing a treatise of his own entitled The Bloody Tenant Washed and Made White in the Blood of the Lamb. Granted, Williams was no longer a Baptist and Cotton was a Puritan, but the principle in question made their debate of the greatest relevance to Baptists. Cotton argued that both the church and public officials had a duty to ensure that basic Christian doctrines were accepted throughout society, even if they had to resort to force. By the end of yesterday's Baptist Brief, we had two religious liberty treatises on the table. The Bloody Tenet of Persecution, published in 1644 by Roger Williams, defending it, and The Bloody Tenet Washed and Made White in the Blood of the Lamb, published in 1647 by John Cotton, opposing it. But that wasn't the end of it. In 1652, Williams responded to Cotton by publishing a sequel to his earlier treatise, entitled The Bloody Tenet Yet More Bloody, by Mr. Cotton's endeavor to wash it white in the blood of the Lamb. In it, as Leon Macbeth tells us in The Baptist Heritage, Williams refuted Cotton's arguments and cited recent cases of religious persecution in the American colonies. In both of his treatises, Williams emphasized the freedom of the soul before God and insisted that this freedom is denied by the uniting of church and state. All the power the magistrate hath over the church, Williams wrote, is temporal, not spiritual, and all power the church hath over the magistrate is spiritual, not temporal. In the church, Williams contended, the king, president, or tax collector has no authority, but is simply another layperson. 
By the same token, in relation to the state, the preacher is simply another citizen. Macbeth writes that Williams used the two tables of the Ten Commandments to illustrate the separation of church and state. The magistrate, he wrote, may regulate and punish offenses against the second table, those commandments dealing with our relationships with other persons, but not infractions against the first table, those dealing with our relationship with God. Thank you.